How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from our Spongebob Thousand here. Today is February 23rd, 2021. And today we're going to talk about the hurricane season and we're also going to, and we're going to forecast it for this year, at least for the Atlantic hurricane season. And since it's relatively quiet in the United States, I thought it would be a good time to talk about the hurricane season. So, um, but before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post of kitchens if you want to see even more weather related content. So as we begin by taking a look at the current um, sea surface temperature anomaly in the northern Atlantic in the northern hemisphere for majority of the northern hemisphere, and you see that for the most part, the most of the northern Atlantic has is having sea surface temperatures well above average where pretty much the main development region between Africa and the Caribbean is for the most part above average um, outside of this little cold spot where the sea surface temperature is right around average and even towards the Caribbean for the most part the sea surface temperatures are above average and this region right here is considered the main development region where majority of the hurricanes and the potent hurricanes and tropical storms really form off the African coast where we have a little bit of unstable air in this region thanks to the cooler um, thanks to the cooler waters that are further south of um, Africa and also the warmer waters that are pretty much right around the main development region that creates unstable air and as a result it, it really in induces a lot of these low pressure systems that continue to develop and as it does so it has a uh, potential to even to grow even more thanks to the warmer um, sea surface temperatures that are typically above 80 degrees so this is a driving force of where most of the tropical storms and hurricanes form off the African coast where there's a lot of unstable air to really create those low pressure systems because low pressure system because a hurricane can't just sprout out of nowhere just like that it needs already an existing area of low pressure to really develop into something bigger such as a tropical storm or a hurricane so out off the coast of Africa it's a very conducive environment for that and th which is why this is considered the main development region and you see with sea surface temperature as well above average that's definitely a concern when it comes to the hurricane season because obviously what um, what fuels hurricanes is very warm water temperatures and when wa water temperatures are warmer than average not only does it um, enhance the chance of of evaporation and rapid um, convection in this area it also already puts a lot of the main development region under very relatively low pressure lower pressure than typical because as a result of warmer sea surface temperatures the air is a lot more the air temperature is obviously higher and since it's higher um, that means that the air molecules are moving around a little a, a, a lot more than let's say colder temperatures and since they're moving around and they're spaced out a little more since war since warmer air molecules filled with energy try to space out that makes them less dense and it creates a very low pressure it pretty much sets the stage of very low pressures right around the main development region which is key in determining how active our hurricane season will be because this is primarily the main development region which extends off the coast of western africa all the way to the caribbean where this is where most of the hurricanes develop and seeing sea surface temperatures above average definitely signifies that we're probably going to be in another active hurricane season now this is as of february 20th so a lot could change between um four three four months um and even beyond that where the most active part of the hurricane season august and september however based off of the trend we're seeing and base um it just see it just seems unlikely that i just find it unlikely that this will completely change into um the seas of temperatures will completely um shift within a couple months to colder than average sea surface temperatures we have to wait and see but based off of the trend we've been seeing over the past several months um it doesn't seem like there is any driving force that's going to change the sea surface temperatures from being warmer than average and a lot of the um and the national hurricane center agrees with it it doesn't really expect 
it's a change very much and it's currently expecting an above average hurricane season as well so it's it doesn't seem like it's gonna it, um change based off the trend we're seeing which is unfortunate because that would mean that we're in for maybe another active hurricane season however the however you might be think looking at the gulf of mexico where a lot of sea surf temperatures are cooler than average which isn't a surprise based off of how many cold, how many winter storms pass through this area and a lot of troughs moving through bringing that arctic air further southward so this may definitely be the saving grace for this hurricane season that at least the gulf of mexico is not in sea surf temperatures above average however like i said the main development region is right in the middle of the Atlantic, just north of the equator, and not necessarily in the Gulf of Mexico. So that means that for the most part, while the Gulf of Mexico might be below average in terms of sea surface temperatures, and the Gulf of Mexico is definitely far more subject to change because it is further up northward where it's affected a little bit more by the westerly winds and the jet stream. So the so sea surface temperatures are definitely a lot more subject to change keep that in mind than let's say closer to the equator where they're far from the jet stream and the westerly winds where there's a lot of unstable air but um even though the gulf of mexico in a potential case might be below average in terms of sea surface temperatures it won't be enough to completely to completely make this hurricane season weak or even average because most of the tropical systems form in the main development region, which is which is pretty much um where where um a lot of low pressures come off the coast uh bring a lot of hurricanes. So the Gulf of while definitely low pressure systems and tropical storms and hurricanes definitely do form in the Gulf of Mexico, the chances of it are are very I wouldn't say slim, but very slim, but they're definitely lower than, let's say, forming in the Caribbean or in the main development region, where at this point, their sea surface temperatures are well above average. So the Gulf of Mexico being having sea surface temperatures currently below average doesn't really make me confident that it's going to completely weaken the hurricane season at um, the potential hurricanes I'll form, because for the most part, I do expect that it's going to the um the formation of hurricanes should be more active thanks to the sea surface temperatures overall being being above average for most of the atlantic and um outside of that you, we do see cooler much cooler than average temperatures just off the coast of the carolinas but for the most part not a lot of storms obviously form there so it won't be any it won't be a major factor in determining the forecast of the hurricane season and we do see much warmer than average chapters in this region and i'm and there seems to be a pattern where when we see well above average chapters in the north that typically means that for one thing that we could expect more subtropical cyclones but for the most part they're going to be they're going to be um um fish storms not really affect land since obviously this far up north the westerly winds are just going to steer it and break it apart as it moves towards the east um, but also having much warmer temperatures this far up north kind of affects the hurricane season a little bit because because there's a little bit more of a low pressure um the pressures the air pressure um in this area is a little bit lower so that might affect the bermuda high by pushing it a little bit further southwards where the pressure is a little bit higher than this area so this might be good news but for the most part i don't expect it to be a major factor either but there could be maybe one or two storms that don't form as a result of air pressures that are lower think in this far up north and since it's kind of gonna disrupt the jet stream and uh rising air in this region since there's so much rising air in this region because because in on earth when there's a area of rising air that there has to be an equal amount of sinking air in another region so it might that sinking air might be closer to the, to the main development region but again i don't expect it to be a major factor and uh, all these sea surface temperatures are still subject to change especially closer to the gulf where they're further northward closer to the jet stream and the the unstable air where the climate is a lot more temperate than the equator but for the most part 
ex I expect the sea surface temperatures to be well above average and a lot more hurricanes and tropical storms to form. But that's not the only factor that we need to take a look at when determining how many storms will form in the Atlantic hurricane season. We also another huge factor, potent probably even bigger than the sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic is the El Nino and La Nina patterns, which you probably should already know when there's an El Nino, there's a lot more stable air in the atmosphere closer to the Atlantic, and as a result, less hurricanes form, less tropical storms form, and it's as a result of, like I said, when there is rising air in one region, there's an equal amount of, there has to be an equal amount of sinking air in another region, so there isn't as much precipitation or evaporation in areas of sinking air, and during an El Nino phase, there's a lot of rising air towards the eastern Pacific, um, thanks to the warmer than average um, equatorial um, Pacific sea surface temperatures, but um, and since there's so much rising air in the in the by the equator, that means that a lot of that sinking air has to go somewhere, and a lot of it goes to the Atlantic, which hinders a lot of tropical cyclone development. However, the opposite happens when we're talking about a La Nina, where the sea surface temperatures closer to the um, coasts are a lot more um, are a lot more. Um, um, a lot more warmer and as a result there's a lot more there's a lot less um, warm air closer to there's a lot less um, unstable air in the Atlantic which induces a lot of um, let me show you guys because I, I just want to show an image of better um, to better exemplify this point um, so this so this is what happens essentially there's a lot more colder air closer to the equator during the La Nina phase and as a result there's a lot of singing air in that region so so it allows for a lot more rising air to happen in the Atlantic which is essentially um which essentially creates more hurricanes and tropical storms but here we are go um here's a probability of the La Nina over the next several months and this extends all the way to September the most active part of the hurricane season and you see that we're deep in the, El, La, the La Nina phase currently. If we take a look at the sea surface temperature anomaly, you're gonna see that we have been deep in the La Nina for quite some time now, for a couple months, which is one of the reason why one of the reasons why we saw such an active hurricane season and the most active in history last year. And as um if we take a look at the Nino 3.4 region, the region most um the region most reliable when it comes to forecasting an El Nino or La Nina phase. We've been um, in a La Nina for a lot of for a, a lot of months, and it's expected to continue on and on for the next several months. However, the chances of a neutral phase definitely do increase as we head forward, especially toward closer towards May, where it's actually more likely we're going to see a, a neutral phase in May than a La Nina phase and a neutral phase does give um is typically like an average hurricane season I'd say maybe closer to more active than it um than usual because because a neutral phase isn't that much different than let's say a La Nina phase and a, and if on top of that when you include the above average sea surface temperatures closer to the Atlantic. That means that we're, that means that um, it's more likely to be act more active than usual, even during a neutral La, um, La Nina or El Nino phase. But you see that um, even past May, um, it's expected to get back into um, a higher chance into a La Nina phase, which is definitely something we don't want to see because that increases the chance of an active hurricane season again. And not and not only does it increase, but it peaks closer to the peak months of the hurricane season, which is August and September, where near pretty much over just over fifty percent. There's just over a fifty percent chance in September of a La Nina phase, which which is the most active part of the hurricane season. And this definitely shows that um, since we're gonna see a La Nina and higher than average sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic. It's likely going to be another active hurricane season, just like last year. 
well, I wouldn't say just like last year because I think it's still going to be difficult to match last year's hurricane and tropical storm output, but um, based off of the pattern we're seeing, it's going to be another active hurricane season. So my forecast based off of the La Nina and El Nino phases and the Atlantic sea surface temperatures, so the average is 13 named storms, um, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes. My forecast for this coming hurricane season is 24 total storms, which isn't as much as 2020, but that's but that's not saying much because 2020 was the most active hurricane season of all time. So saying it's less than that isn't really isn't really anything great, especially when it's well above average of the 13 named storms. Um, there's and I'm forecasting 12 named hurricanes and well 12 hurricanes and six major hurricanes. Um, this definitely subject to change. I could definitely be wrong from this, but I think I think from the most likely chances that there's going to be an above average hurricane season with more hurricanes on the way. But I want you to keep I want you guys to keep in mind that just because maybe the hurricane season might not be as active as you think or as 2020, you have to keep in mind that all it takes is one hurricane to completely destroy an entire community and unfortunately take lives so despite so whether it's um record breaking above average average below average you guys need to just stay aware and do not keep your guard down just because the hurricane season won't match your expectations but yeah based off of what i've been seeing i'm i think i'm going a little high with this forecast because the new i do expect it the la nina to be a little less strong but I'm I'm going to say it's going to be a little higher based off of the trend we've been seeing um, from last year and it's expected to continue. So I'm going to say 24 total named storms, which would make it one of the more active hurricane seasons we've seen in a lot. Well, not in a long time since obviously last year was record breaking, but it um, in all. Um, but this is going to be potentially one of the more active hurricane seasons you've ever seen even including 2020 hurricane season so yeah this is my forecast um make sure um for you guys i hope you guys um continue to stay um um to stay safe um regarding um the hurricanes in the future and just uh keep in mind of the hurricane season forecast um over the next several months because it's definitely subject to change with any variations in the sea surface temperatures in the future but anyways, guys, I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. Make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather content. I hope you guys have a good day.